Good morning. It's the Love Your Lawn Hour, and the folks at Growing Green are joining us this morning. I should say the folk is joining us this morning. It's Tommy Cowett, agronomist on staff, one of the managers at Growing Green. And good morning, Tommy. Good morning, Bill. All right. First thing on my agenda to talk about is what everybody's talking about, whether they're loving their lawn or wishing it was not this way. It's the heat oh, yeah. and the stress that it's putting on our lawns and our you know, our bushes, anything that's outdoors. Talk to me a little bit about what you're seeing. I'm seeing what Alex just described is 99 degrees. Mm. Now, if you're a Bermuda lawn, you want that. This is uh, the best Bermuda growing weather we've had in years. And I got to tell you, I'm really, at the end of the day, when it's really, really hot, I can rest myself and go to sleep feeling good that the Bermuda grass is finally getting the heat that it really needs to recover. It really loves Cause, this. Because we've really talked about this and all the athletic right. fields that died from winter kill. Yes. And we're trying to grow them back. We're seeding. We're sprigging. We're sodding these fields. And there's tremendous amount of athletic turf all over the region that's dead. Mm-hmm. And we've got to replant it. And, and get you're it back. replanting with Bermuda right now? Or? Bermuda. Absolutely getting it back. So, hybrid Bermuda is available in seed, and we're seeding that. And now, what, say hybrid Bermuda. What is that? What are you that's doing? That's improved varieties. Mm-hmm. You know, you go back to uh, Tifton, Georgia, back when uh, they, you know, where the founder, some of these Tiff Dwarf, Tiff Way, the 419, um, these were developed by a geneticist I see. who actually uh, <laughs> made them so that they were not propagatable by seed. They made them so that the seed was sterile, so they could only be vegetatively propagated from sprigs and sod. And Which meant more profits for the company, oh, I yeah, guess, it, right? It because you guys them start- that they would have 419 patented forever, you know, and uh, you can't get it from seed. But so- but Bermuda grass is essentially carrying a sign that says, abuse me, okay. and I love it. Because you're talking a lot of heat, okay. not a lot of water necessarily, unless you just planted oh, it, right? You do want to throw the water to it initially. Yes. Yeah. It can survive really dry conditions. You see it. It, it that, survives it actually, in these beds. Smith was just mm-hmm. talking about the common Bermuda mess that his wife is cleaning up in some lava rock that you, grew you, into the lava it's rock. Hard it's hard to get it out. It's, it's, it's impossible. So, yeah. I mean, do, th- this is uh, the kind of job, what he described his wife is doing, where it's a patio or it's like beds mm-hmm. that were right. rocked, and then yeah. the Bermuda creeped into it. Yes. And now yeah, it's yeah. a mess, and you've got to dig all this Bermuda root out. That's when you bring in appropriate to bring in dynamite (laughs) you know and just blow the damn thing up and say forget it you know because that's miserable especially in this heat it it does point to the hardiness though again of bermuda grass if it can grow in something as hostile as hot temperatures with rock oh yeah that you know if you have even a little bit of soil and a little bit of water you're going to have pretty good results i guess what is the worst thing you could have for bermuda this time of year. What would be the, the death knell for Bermuda at this Cooler point? Cooler temperatures. Last year, we didn't get any 90-degree mm-hmm. days. We were not getting any 90s. It was like low 80s most of the year, and it was cool. And, the, mean, other thing, and the year before, too. The other yeah, thing so. that might be going on if uh, you're in one of these, uh, I don't know, diverse grass lawns, let me put it that way, where you've got maybe some fescue. lawns. And the fescue is starting to weaken. Out. Yeah, trans lawns. That's the way we need to put it, Tommy. <laughs> It is what we think it is. We do call them transitional lawns. Really? Yeah. Okay. But the idea would be at a point when this fescue is maybe getting stressed a little bit with these temperatures and this heat and this sun. And then that's waking up and the Bermuda saying, that, yeah, this is for me. Does that then make the Bermuda path to grow even better because the fescue is not able to really resist being oh, overgrown? Yeah. Is that Exactly. Happening? Yes. And we are now getting ready to begin doing the... Bermuda eradication program, Mm -hmm. which we have for the fescue, where we take the Bermuda out of the fescue without damaging the fescue with a particular product that we've tested, and it's very Mm -hmm. good, and it works. It takes about three applications, but yeah, Mm -hmm. like you're saying, I mean, you do get these, you have two species competing with each other, and one right now has got the advantage, that's Bermuda. 
for a lot of us that, uh, you know, Bermuda, unless that is your goal, unless that's what you're wanting and trying to do, mm-hmm. it's it's a weed for any other purpose, for any other lawn, because it, it will take over. It right? runs, man. Yeah. It runs. I mean, Winston-Salem even has out in Clemens, a place called Bermuda Run. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of truth in it. It is. It can move. It can creep into your yard from your neighbor's yard and be all over it in no time. And by the way, if you have a question for our lawn expert, this is a great time to uh, check in with us. The phone number is 896-1980. It's great if you're a a growing green customer and you want to tell us, you know, about the the results you've gotten. But if you're not a growing green customer, that's welcome, too. Works just like your website. People can write to the website with questions, whether it's about Bermuda grass or anything else. Ask the expert. And Mm -hmm. it's a great opportunity for uh, getting a quick answer on something from a qualified group of professionals and yes. that's the thing a lot of experience in our building and i suppose the guys are all going to be coming in again today because we called them all in yesterday it was really too hot well, i was gonna say i mean you were out yesterday in the field i worked how did you uh, till about one o'clock now, how, that that's was it a, well okay I came in and that's pretty crushing heat even though i mean late morning it was it was pumping up uh Close to 90 already yesterday. It was. It was. And I was down in the hole again, and I was killing more weeds mm-hmm. and spraying weeds and you name it. What I do mean, you do to protect yourself, though? I mean, from the sun and from the uh, heat. Big summer hats. Yes. Big hats. Wide brim right now. Mm-hmm. Big time. We're all wearing our cowboy hats. and uh, yes. Basically, that's the best hat to wear is the wide brim. And you also got to take, uh, I would guess, a frequent breaks to make sure you stay hydrated because this... It's kind of heat will just suck the moisture out of everything. It will, and we keep a lot of water. Everybody has to stay hydrated right now. Everybody needs to be drinking lots and lots of liquids all day long. And I'm looking at the guys. Everybody's got these really cool uh, towels you can buy. Hey, Home Depot, Lowe's, go in, and you'll see on display. We just talked about the misters. Yes. That are available. Well, we there. haven't talked on the air about that, but I right. will when we come well, back. But what was the towel thing here? Oh, these towels that you cool yourself down with. They're cooling towels. You wet them down. You can keep it with you. Keep it on your side. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Keep it goes it down wet. the back of your neck kind of Oh, thing? yeah, man. And that, that'll keep you cool. These little, uh, well, they're kind of like little tubes that you can wear over your head. You know, put it around your mm-hmm. head and get that wet. Put it on. It's like a tube. Very and interesting. Very nice little thing, sort of like a bandana kind of a, I of see. a thing. These are great tips from people that uh, uh, spend a lot of time out of doors in these uh, warm temperatures. And we, we do, uh, uh, I think we're wise to, to pay attention. And there's something else that we're going to talk about on how to enjoy that outdoor area a little bit more with uh, a system of uh, that Tommy was just talking about. We'll talk about that in just a bit. Eight nine six one nine eight zero. It's the Love Your Lawn Hour. I'm Bill Flynn. We'll be back in just a moment. Call now. The number is eight nine six one nine eighty. AM nine eighty. The Eagle. It's the Love Your Lawn Hour. And love, by the way, I don't think is too strong of a word for uh, the emotional connection we tend to have with our lawns, and it works the other way too. And you were just saying. You know, how many folks will absolutely detest Tommy Cowett with us with Growing Green this detest morning? Detest Bermuda grass. It's, it wake you they up at do. night, you hate it so bad. They hate kind of it. I mean, I, it's bizarre. You mm-hmm. get these folks you come across that absolutely have a hatred mm-hmm. for the stuff. Now, I mean, it's a life from an experience, probably with a bed like the one we're talking about, Smith's wife. Well, she actually was kind enough. Susan sent us a sent photograph. Us the picture here, and this is the, and this is cool, where somebody can actually connect with us. And if you you know if you want to send a text, uh, you can do that as well. At least I'll give you my cell number, so you can do that at some point. But here is the photograph. It's, it's a of formal the work that's flower bed in yeah. front of someone's home, and there's a walkway, and there's mm. Nandinas and some other plants and shrubs that are planted but they're all completely covered and inundated with bermuda grass now you told me that nandina is not got a bright future right now Now i would say that nandina's just got to come completely out and just get rid of it uh, because, because the root system has been compromised it's now wrapped with bermuda root and stolen uh, and now 
you know, if you do plant that back or leave it there, mm. you know, uh, the Bermuda's just going to come back from mm. the little pieces of the stolen and what we used to sprig plants, uh, Bermuda grass in fields. Mm-hmm. Those little pieces, just one little piece of Bermuda will come back and get this so whole mess back So if you don't get again. it all. If you don't get it all, you're way well, back where you right. are. Yep. And in, I, no time. Th- in this photograph, it's intriguing to me this bermuda is obviously sending out runners across hostile territory it absolutely looks like it's crossing over the walkway (laughs) (laughs) and and this is not uh, uncommon for bermuda to have that kind of go under walkways yeah you see the root system can really get up underneath a a slab and be there Mm -hmm. and you know when we're doing kill-offs that's something we have to pay close attention to is right along the edge and a lot of times your Bermuda loves it right around the curbs. You know, it's really, yeah. really hot. Yep. And you'll see it. That's where it's going to really thrive. Now, can actually uh, Bermuda cause a problem in a walkway or a hard surface? Could it actually undermine that and or crack it over I time? I do believe it could, yeah. I mean, enough girth of that. Sure. I mean, if it's a thin walkway, uh, a thin, mm-hmm. you know, patio porch. Or you put some pavers or something out and you get them just... Man, I have dug out a lot of Bermuda in my time. I see this job that she is working on, and I go, oh, I've been there and done that. Is it a bless her heart moment because you yes. know how hard this is? Yes, and if I was her today, I'd be get the mist systems going. Smith said she's got an umbrella she's moving around. Just to give her cover while Just she's give out her cover there. out there because, you know, it's All hostile. Right. You brought up uh, off air earlier this morning these uh, misters, and uh, just again right now, Tell me about that, because some of us may not know. You, In fact, I wasn't familiar, but you are a big fan of these things. What are they, and how do they help you either survive or enjoy the outdoor areas that you got? Well, you know, it's a mister uh, nozzle that can go on any garden hose. And if you've got one of these, you know, just a regular hose nozzle that has multiple uh, attachments or uh, multiple settings, I mean, you can have mist, you can have shower, you have cone, all these things. Well, these are just the mister. And uh, they can wrap around a pole and or on your deck rail or wherever and just hook your hose up to it and let her roll. And you can just really enjoy this cool temperature or cooling temperature out on your deck. Now, is that for very slow saturation of lawns or for cooling people it's off really, or both? It's the, for the cooling above. people off, cooling plants off, cooling off that space where you're going to be hanging out like around your deck. Or in my case, I have a jacuzzi in the back on the mm-hmm. deck, and I like to get in that in the evening. But I'll go home and cool everything down with the hose. I got one of these, uh, the fire hose nozzle from Walmart. Mm-hmm. And that thing will shoot about 50 feet in the air. And what I'll do is just quickly cool everything off. Cool off the whole lawn, which is called syringing. Is that a healthy way. thing for your lawn to? It is. It is. The, I'm for golf the fescue course superintendents anyway. do it yeah. all the time in the summertime. And does it they actually go out and cool lower, it down? Lower yeah. the temperature. It's going to cool it, things you do know down. That. Yep. Syringing oh. is a common practice on golf greens, yeah. where uh, you know guy will come up, quick connect, pop that, uh, just cool, hit the whole green really quickly, and uh, just cool everything down about twenty degrees. It's really. that much of a difference. Oh, twenty yeah. degrees. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, on a 99-degree day. I'll take the Oh, yeah. And you're, you know, spraying. And you're getting it down to close to 80. That's a good deal. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if your water temperature is about, say, 50 or 60 degrees, and you're uh, hitting, you know, an ambient temperature outside is 99, the surface is going to be somewhere in the middle there, and then you can bring it down. I mean, and mm-hmm. just cool everything down, man. The heat well, it, is, it will take its toll. Yes. On a tall fescue, and I'm I'm want to keep my lawn perfect, and it's still perfect. I mean, it's really not going off color or anything. Yet. Wow, that's yeah. beautiful. A lot and of lawns it... right now, if they're not watered, uh, the fescue lawns are starting mm-hmm. to go off color. Yeah, and not just fine. just the uh, the cooling that you're talking about mm-hmm. is enough to keep it from going brown, or do you need to actually water it in addition to that? Watering on a regular schedule. You know, three times a week, putting out about an inch and a half of rain uh, of water uh, per week uh, is good. You know, and that should do it. That should be plenty. I don't water my lawn at all. The only thing I do is syringe when I get home. That's just to cool things down. 
And you do that on a daily basis when we hit 90 and above? Is sure. That pretty much the I mean, mark? I've been doing it this week. Yeah. I mean, I'm just doing well, it. Well, you got more ahead of you if our, our reports are right. Yeah, man. I it's know. it's a hot weekend story. You know, because it, it can be kind of miserable out there uh, when it gets this oh, yeah. hot. <laughs> well, the other thing, you know, you talk about uh, syringing the lawn and cooling it down. You know, your outdoor living areas that are part of your landscape areas. Uh, sure. You know, your deck. Got a lot of heat that's been absorbed during the day. Oh, if yeah. you can cool that down, and you know, if you got direct sunlight on the side of the house, especially if it's brick, I mean, that's that's blowing out enormous amounts of heat hours after that exposure. Oh yeah, I mean, this heat is uh, it's tremendous. It's it'll take its toll on all types of things, plants, trees. So um, you know. hose it down, pay a little more on the water bill. And it's good investment uh, because sure, I'm going to be saving. interested to see uh, what my water bill is going to be. Okay. You know, um, I'm just going to test it. It's usually around forty bucks. I tell you, if you were in California, it'd be a lot more than that, <laughs> counting the fines, <laughs> right? I'm just going to see what the month's <laughs> water bill is for this month. I know I've been using a lot All more. Right, next time you come back, we, if you can give us an update, okay. I'd like to know. I will. All right. Yep. All right. It's a uh, nine twenty-seven. And this morning we have with us Tommy Cowett of Growing Green, the Love Your Lawn Hour, back with our next segment in just a moment on The Eagle. Call now. The number is 896-1980, AM 980, The Eagle. It's the Love Your Lawn Hour this morning. Good morning. friends at Growing Green are joining us this morning. Tommy Cowett, uh, one of the agronomists on staff, one of the managers at Growing Green, and Certainly, Jonathan Rigsby is, uh, uh, what do we call him, turf commander? Is that the, the turf term? turf commander. Occasionally, he's listening in to make sure we're covering all the points. Oh, and, yeah. and he's been known to call from time to time just to be part of the show. Yes. So, uh, Jonathan, you're welcome maybe to we'll, join us. Maybe we'll get a call. I had no idea. You were just talking to our intern, Faith, a moment ago about some certified playground mulch. Yes. Are you you're not kidding me. There is such a thing. There absolutely is. There are grades of mulch and it's certified. Now for homeowners, we may not know this, but what is the point? Well, the certified playground mulch is engineered wood chips. Yes. <laughs> and uh there's one No kidding, really. Yes, one of our customers, Neil Grimes, owns a company that he invented one called Kid Cushion. And, uh, you know, it's made right out here in Lexington. So, uh, you know, and it's world famous. I mean, this stuff is sold all over the country. It's and it's certain, placed on playground areas? Is yes, that correct? for, you know, children's playgrounds. Right. We were talking to Faith uh-huh. about, you know, her um, school choices and mm-hmm. daycare facilities for her kids. And, yeah. you know, and it just, you know, I was telling them about how I used to maintain a particular playground over here off of, in Bethania. Or Bethabra. And it's, did you say it was nine inches? And this is yeah, inspected and there's oh, a fall area inspected. and all That's that. That's right. And they have to maintain, these daycare facilities have to maintain nine inches depth of the engineered wood chip or playground mulch in the fall zone, which is out from the equipment, the playground equipment, mm-hmm. about 10 to 12 feet away from it. So they got to maintain that nice fluff nine inches deep. So they have to keep wow. replenishing the mulch on these oh, playgrounds. Oh, yeah, we guess. Absolutely. Because that self-compacts and gets disappeared and goes away it, over it time. It starts all to that. decay yeah. and decompose from the microorganisms that are in it. Man, I'll tell you what, if you get a hold of some of the old mulch mm-hmm. that's coming off of these playgrounds that has to be removed from time to time, that's the best thing you could possibly put in your garden. So I like to see these daycare facilities start Good. a garden with the older decompose playground material and you know teach kids how to grow vegetables That's a great in the idea. summertime. i didn't yeah. realize that all worked together they got it right there yeah. on site right a, a veritable circle of life right there right there Go if on. they people were smart and would do things like that turn the playground mm-hmm. into a garden or use the mulch mm-hmm. from the pl- right. the old mulch from the playground and you got yourself great soil right there that's place in lexington is are they selling the kinds of mulch you're talking about to uh Residents, uh, residential areas, or is it primarily just for professional? No, oh, it's, it, he supplies, I'm sure, many mulch yards in the area with the different colored mulches. You know, you got your red, your brown, your black mulches. Those are the dyed ones. They're beautiful. And then I'm sure he has triple shredded hardwood. 
Uh, he's got the kid cushion, which is that really nice engineered. I bet he's got cypress mulch. And we say engineered. Are you just talking about the size of the mulch itself that's been clipped or it's processed? been chipped? It's been processed. Yes, I it's been put see. into a barrel grinder, a big barrel grinder that grinds it down to a specific size. See, all these years I've been using the term mulch like it was all the same everywhere. Nope. Well, I, I mean, I know there's pine bark and there's rock and there's, you know, but th- I had no idea. We the- have taken this thing <laughs> landscaping yes, to yeah. a new level. I mean, it's getting better and better all the mm-hmm. all the time. <laughs> all right. Well, that's good advice. And uh, Tommy, I also like you to talk a little bit uh, to us. But the areas that we tend to mulch are maybe the the bed areas around a tree or sure. a plant bed area, and there's a lot of times where homeowners will put out this um, black landscape fabric or maybe it's a green landscape fabric. Yes, not an advocate of any kind of fabric. Tell me about this stuff. I can tell you a story of what happened yesterday. I got a call from a gentleman who had a problem with a tree. And I saw went over to Kernersville. This beautiful, majestic oak, a giant red, Mm. beautiful red oak behind his home. How old do you think the tree is? I would say the tree was... 40 and 60 years old, wow. 75 feet tall, beautiful, mm-hmm. wilted, completely going into wilt. And he's worried because this thing is going to probably cost him four or $5,000 if it dies. Holy moly. And, you know, we are Arbor Jet certified to do tree injections now and care for trees. Well, we're wondering what's causing this oak wilt. I'm, I'm worried it could be sudden oak death, which is a common disease with some oaks that are under stress. Oh. Oak wilt or bacterial leaf scorch. What could it be? Well, we get rooting around and we find that the whole tree has been, um, they've applied this black landscape fabric. Skirted around the base of the, the tree. The entire all the way tree around. and out probably 20 feet on every direction into the woods. That was underneath the leaves in the forest. So the thinking for the homeowner, whoever put it there, was, well, it'll keep, you know, the, the Bermuda grass the and the forest, weeds please. and everything from growing up. and it, it, Insanity. It'll look better. Right. So immediately I had him go ahead and get that stuff up. I now mean, explain, why does it the root system of the tree was yeah. growing on top of this plastic. See, this explains a situation I have at my house now that I didn't realize. Okay, so tell me what's going on. With this um, this fabric okay. cover that is causing ultimately the tree to well, stress and even one, die, it's not getting any water in the in the uh, drip zone of that plant anywhere. Um, the water is being repelled quickly off of the plastic out to the drip line, but there's no water that is actually penetrating the soil around the tree. And this will make the roots roots kind of erupt toward the surface. The, the is roots that what's are, happening? are being compromised in yeah. that this is what they call adventitious roots. When the tree senses that it it's losing its root system, it will start to grow new adventitious roots uh, to try to grow a new root system. And what this throws the whole balance out. Now, I don't think we're quite there on this tree. This is a big, big oak. Mm-hmm. I see this more on smaller trees and parking lots and things like that where... The people put the mounds of mulch up too high on a tree and cover up the buttress roots, which are what they call the nabari down at the base of a tree where it flares out, called root flares. And is that... You don't want to cover your root flares. Hold on to that uh, thought. We'll finish up uh, what we're doing to our our trees, large and small. That's Maybe a lot of us right now are saying, this could be happening at my house. And I, as you're talking about this... A light goes off, and I'll tell you why, coming up in just a moment. And uh, 896-1980, the Love Your Lawn Hour will continue with Growing Green and Tommy Callett. Call now. The number is 896-1980, AM 980, The Eagle. Good morning, 946. It is our uh, final segment of our always fast-moving program with Tommy Cowett and our Love Your Lawn Hour this morning. Good morning. And, uh, good morning. Glad to have you. Good to see you again. And I'm Bill Flynn. And, you know, we for those of us that do love our lawns or 
I really like them anyway. We want to spend time and have them nice. Sometimes we think we're doing the right thing when, in fact, we're, we're causing a problem. And I think this is a, uh, a moment of epiphany maybe for a lot of homeowners. You're talking about this landscaping. What do they call this? The tarp or the, the acrylic layout that you put, this fabric cover that fabric. you put? Landscape fabric. Landscape fabric. And Not the, a big advocate of that. The, the idea is it'll keep weeds and stuff from popping up in, in your beds and, right. and keep grass from growing, ideally. But or create one of the most miserable cleanup jobs in the world or what? choke and kill your trees. And we don't want any of that no. uh, on the downside. and. You were telling me that the, the, these roots will come up to the top. Uh, Grow to right look. through it. Yeah, and I'm actually seeing now, because for some time, I've had a, uh, a, a a nice little tree growing, and I've always wondered why it hasn't been growing more. Your fabric's choking it. <laughs> and it's in a fabric area, and there you have just diagnosed the problem. Exactly. And, and sure enough, the root system has come up toward the top, because it's stressed and it's looking for water. Mm -hmm. And here, all this time, I'm thinking, you know, that with the fabric, the landscape fabric we got there, you know, it's in the bed. It's it's going to be healthier. But, in fact, I've been strangling that poor plant for years. Oh, yeah. Shame on me. Yeah. But, I mean, how many of us right now that are listening have the landscape fabric in beds or other areas, and it's causing this problem? So what do we do? How do we how do we balance, get rid of it, and, and then keep away what we're trying to keep away? Don't ever use it in Number one. landscape application unless there's not going to be any plant material growing there. Or, you know, say it's a some type of patio or, you know, a rock garden. That well, you don't you no want plants. anything living. Yeah. Right. Okay. I mean, it could be used for that, I would imagine. But don't don't plant plants with it in it. Or cut, you know, cut your little slit in it and then plant a plant. Like a Tyvek I, barrier or something. I've like. done that. I, I, we used to do it as a common practice in landscaping. Use mulch. Use pine needles. Use hardwood mulches. It'll give you the same. You know, you mm -hmm. do have to replenish your mulch from time to time. Rock. You know, I think a lot of people like to use, when you're using rocks, you know, use the, the people like to use the fabric underneath it. Right. That's great. If uh -huh. it's just going to be rock, but no plants. I see. Because plants and fabric don't get along. Now here, the other thing is, you said that even doing all that, the, the runners for Bermuda grass and maybe some others. Right up. We'll go right under it. And, it's, and over the top. And then you get an, a, a mess that is, is nightmarish. There, clean <laughs> a nightmare. This is what Smith's wife is working on today. I wonder if there's fabric underneath that patio that she's cleaning up. You know, mm -hmm. it looks like it's possible. Because that black fabric right. is black and it heats up even more. And it so really the, encourages that Bermuda to run oh, underneath I it. Didn't think about the heat side. This, uh, this is great information. And uh, I'm glad uh, you're here to share it. Because we're not doing any favors for the landscape uh, fabric manufacturers right now but this is i mean this is good information to know sure and it could explain a lot of if you're having problems with a tree not looking as good as it should this could be a part of reason look why. around yeah if you're seeing some you know a tree that's not doing mm -hmm. real well it's good to inspect around the root zone mm -hmm. of that tree see what's going on there um it could be that someone covered it with fat mm -hmm. and it could have <laughs> been some time ago maybe if you're if you've been in the house for a while, maybe the previous owner some years before could have put this down and it still is having this effect. Oh, sure. I mean, this stuff doesn't degrade that quickly. Mm -hmm. Some of it's really, really thick and mm -hmm. will repel every bit of water. You know, it's supposed to mm -hmm. be permeable. It's supposed to actually allow water to go into it, but I don't see that happening. Mm -hmm. Not with most of the common applications of this material. Well, I find it uh, fascinating. It repels water. You know, we live, and as folks are listening here, we live almost in the, in the depth of sun, you know, summer, almost like a dog, it's, it's dog on close to a desert environment with some of the temperatures, and then, but then we add the humidity, and then we add the dryness of, you know, no getting rain sometimes. And then we got, you were telling me you got swamp area, literally, within the listening area here. Sure. I mean, the Fabra Swamp. Yeah. Love it. And I drive you by it. I've see, seen it. And you'll see that thing get covered with lotus. 
there's a, a lotus invasion in that pond. It's a mm. beautiful plant. Uh, commonly, the little lotus flower is used in a lot of floral applications where, you know, floral shops mm-hmm. and uh, will use the little coney looking flower right. of the lotus plant. But that lotus will die off in the winter. And then within probably a month, you'll see that entire Bathabra swamp engulfed Boom. with lotus. How about that? Weed. <clears throat> and I've actually seen a group of folks over there, about 30 of them at a time, all in the swamp trying to pull it out by hand. That's because they now, didn't want to use any herbicides. They could have used, like, uh, hired us to come in and mm-hmm. do an aquatic weed control, but they didn't want to do that. They See, wanted... that's, that's a job I would not really want, crawling yeah. around in the swamp, yanking up. No, Who they... knows what's underneath that plant? Oh, yeah, they were in there, and they, they I think they harvested <laughs> about 50 full trash bags of lotus plants from there about three or four years ago, I recall. Any, uh, any snakes or otherwise? Oh, you right? know it is. It's a, That's a swampy place, man. That's a, uh, But, I, you know, it's it's fascinating to me. You have to have a growing green, the capacity, literally, to deal with swamp land and darn near desert situations all right here within a few miles of one another. It's a beautiful life. <laughs> <laughs> but it's challenging, though. I don't... You know, it I don't is. know if that you find this in, you know, other parts of the country like that. I would hope other parts of the country are as interesting as they are here. Mm-hmm. I've been fortunate enough to live up in Virginia and Richmond and traveled a lot through the Mid-Atlantic. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, there's, there's, you get this everywhere. There, it, it, it is. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is nice. This is common. I love the triad. It's a great area. All right. Uh, as we're headed into the last moments of our uh, our program this week, uh, homeowners, uh, this time of year, what are the you know top one or two or three things we should be looking at, uh, concerned about, aware of, as we're going into really the, as a dear friend of our family used to say, the dog days of summer? Well, right now we're controlling a lot of really bad weeds, these summer annual and perennial weeds that are now really taking their toll on people's lawns, like Virginia buttonweed, we're controlling that. We're controlling Dallas grass. We're controlling nut sedge. Both purple and yellow nut sedge is on the move right now. Um, clover. All these really difficult to control weeds, violets. We're, we're cleaning those guys up right now. And are these guys more prevalent because of the, the, heat. the fescue they, is actually kind of backed away and, and losing some of its part strength? Of it. Yeah, the population shift. One yeah. is very aggressive right now, mm-hmm. so we're working okay. on those weeds. We're doing spot treatments for them. All the guys are with that we're also doing a lot of insect control mesquite mosquito control big time right now i mean you want to keep those mosquitoes at bay right now they are really rapidly reproducing so Mm -hmm. that's becoming a problem um and then disease with turf we've got brown patch that is a Big problem with tall fescue. Now, We're that controlling a, that right now. Is that now. going to be a summer-long issue, that brown patch? Is that something you have to kind we of be ready for? We started doing them uh, preventatively controlling brown patch starting back in May, and we'll run that through September. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you do suspect you, you see brown circular patches in your lawn, you can call us, and we can come and put a stop to it from doing any more damage. So that's something mm-hmm. you want to control right now. But that's summer. I mean, that's humidity, heat, uh, brings a lot of the worst weeds out, uh, worst insects. I'm sure I have not seen it really bad yet, but uh, Japanese beetles, I'm sure, will be on the mm-hmm. move shortly. Aphids are also going to be a big, uh, we'll start to see a lot of activity of aphids here in the real near future. And by the way, just a real quick thing, the guy with the red oak tree that was dying, that was wilting, are yes. you going to be able to save that tree with the, the, the systems that you have? Basically, what would I've had him do was remove that fabric immediately and get that tree hydrated. All right. So if, he's running sprinkler get there, on okay. it. Yeah. I All mean, right. Do you it think was, it can be saved? Oh, yeah. Well, he's got to oh, do something quick. Great. It didn't yeah. vapor lock yet. It was... The crown at the top was looking good. The lower branches were wilted. And... um. Well, I'm, I'm glad I'm, to know the the possibility of a positive outcome is still there. Hey, we're out of time. Tommy Cowett, Growing Green, growinggreen.com. Thanks, Tommy.